Mr. Trump polls 10 points higher. In five of the six, they have Donald Trump ahead. But um, my hunch right now is if it's Trump versus Biden, Trump would probably win the general election. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a new video. Today, we will be looking at a potential 2024 electoral college map and pitting up Donald J. Trump, the potential, and probably going to be the Republican nominee, and Joe Biden, the pretty much guaranteed Democrat nominee. So we're going to pit these two guys up, and first, let's just get on to the safe states. For the Republicans and Trump, safe states are going to be the usuals, all these more rural areas, majority rural. They don't really have many people in them, but they do have electoral votes, which do would add up. You got Kansas, Oklahoma, you got Arkansas, you got Missouri, and we're putting Iowa and Ohio into the safe category. Trump should easily win them. They shouldn't really go Democrat anytime soon. They've gotten so far to the right, and they vote right compared to the nation by quite a bit. So Trump, he's probably going to have no problem winning them. 2020, it kind of was debatable because 2016 was really the only election where he won them by that decent of a majority. But 2020, they've gone safe, and in 2024, they're going to go safe again. So we should be fine winning that. And, of course, we got Nebraska at large. We got Indiana. That's not going to go anywhere soon. Kentucky, West Virginia, Tennessee. South Carolina is also there. Alabama, Mississippi, all these southern states here. Florida, it's debatable whether you could put that in there. It's definitely close, but you might need for it to go heavily Republican in this election for an official call saying, yeah, Democrats aren't going to get anywhere near winning this state anymore. You just got to have one more election and then it's secure. And of course, you got Alaska. Alaska, they got their pretty wonky voting system, but Republicans should still easily win it. If it wasn't for that voting system, they would pretty easily win it, but because that's there, it's kind of going to be a bit more difficult, but they have such a majority in Alaska that they should still win it by a pretty safe margin. And now you got the likely states for Republicans. You got Texas. Texas, people have been saying that it's moving towards the Dems and the left. It's not really. Like, it's definitely gotten more Democratic, but considering how Trump is doing pretty well with Hispanic trends in the Rio Grande, he should be pretty easily to win the state. He should win it by a pretty decent margin, probably around his 2016-2020 margin, maybe a little bit higher since he's a lot more favorable than in the previous elections, but he still should win it by a pretty decent margin. And same for Florida. Florida, it's teetering on going safe, but if you just have that one more election where it goes by a relatively decent margin you should be fine and main second we'll put that as a safe one it it's going to go by a pretty decent margin it's definitely in iowa and ohio territory where it's a pretty new addition but it's a pretty welcome addition because it's going by safe margin and it's another electoral vote that we get so those are the safe and likely states for republicans and these states are pretty much guaranteed for Republicans. These are the lowest amount of states that the Republicans get, and 219 is going to be the lowest total that they get. And for Dems, you got the safe states usually. Colorado, it's not really going right anytime soon. It's just gone so, so far to the left, and I mean, you're probably not going to get a 2016 five-point difference between Clinton and Trump anytime soon, and it's just gone so far to the left that it's not really coming back anytime soon. It's not even close anymore. I mean, it used to be, but I mean, 2012 was probably the last election that you were actually going to win it. 2016, that's kind of debatable. But I mean, 2016 was already a Trump landslide, but making it even more of a landslide. Yeah, Colorado was probably still going to go blue. So Colorado going red, not going to happen anytime soon. If a shift happens there, maybe, and that's a heavy maybe. That would be like Oregon going red, which that's probably more likely than Colorado going back to red. So 
Colorado is going to be very safe right there. California, easy, safe blue state. According to new polling, it might be a little bit tougher to get California, but it should still go Dem by way more than 10 points. So Dems, they should be fine there, and Joe Biden should be too. With the northeastern states like Washington and Oregon, they they should be a pretty safe state, and they should be easily Dem if they are at all a contest then. Joe Biden has already lost by a relatively decent margin. And of course, you got Illinois. Illinois, safe Midwestern blue state. Chicago pretty much controls all the state, so it's not really winning Republicans over anytime soon. And you, of course, got New England, where you got a lot of the safe states. Vermont, New York, that should be easy to win. Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey might be a bit closer this time but not really it's probably going to go safe again that's more so contentious for the senate seat because you have that controversial senator who probably broke the law and then you got maryland you got dc virginia and we'll put it as a likely state virginia republicans have made gains there but i mean really it voted for joe biden by close to safe margin so I mean, it definitely is moving to the right, but it's not enough that you're really going to change the result there for this election. If Republicans have a really good night, and I mean a really, really good night, you could possibly make it contentious or maybe flip it by a very, very narrow margin. But that's the dream scenario. That's like Joe Biden winning all the swing states in North Carolina. That really isn't really going to happen. That probably won't happen but it's possible it's slightly possible but really it's not going to happen at all hawaii another safe blue state joe biden his margin is definitely going to go down in that state just because of the whole uh fires in hawaii and his poor response to that but they have so much of a difference between dems and republicans in hawaii that it really isn't going to affect them all that much if this was a swing state or even a lean state, yeah, it would probably definitely hurt him a lot and put the state's Dem status at risk, but you still should be able to win Hawaii by around 20 or, at worst case scenario, maybe 15 points. So, easy safe state. And then Maine first, that's also pretty safe. It pretty much is only comprised of Democrat districts and it pretty much controls all of Maine. Maine second has a decent vote share compared to like rural Illinois, but still, Maine first is a safe blue state, and it will probably control where Maine at large goes, which Maine at large, yeah, that's going to be more likely. Now, Maine at large, it is possible to win, and it probably can be win in the same scenario as Virginia going red, but no, it's probably not going to go red in this election. Even if you have a great night, it's still too much to counteract with Maine first being so Democrat. So you kind of got to factor that in. And also, Maine second isn't really that Republican. It's just that pretty much all the districts there are Republican. So you have a very gerrymandered district towards Republicans that can easily net them a victory. But in terms of flipping Maine at large, and it it could happen, but not really. And then Minnesota. Minnesota, it was a close state in 2016. It was definitely flippable in a more Trump just tsunami scenario. But Maine, Maine, it's pretty much in the same camp. It was close in 2016. It was probably flippable, but Trump just didn't have enough of a tsunami in 2016. He had enough of a wave to carry him to victory, but eh, he didn't have enough of a tsunami to win the popular vote and win stuff like Minnesota, Virginia, New Hampshire, which I'm going to get to, and Maine at large. So Minnesota, Minneapolis is moving way, way, way too far to the left for any sort of counterbalance to kick it back to a red state. So Minnesota is going to go blue, and it's not really going to change anytime soon. New Mexico, 
definitely a mo lot more Republican friendly. I mean, you have one district that sometimes goes Republican and sometimes d doesn't. And you should have a pretty decent shot at winning New Mexico if you're a Democrat. And for Biden, he should have a pretty decent chance. Definitely going to be a lower margin than 2020 or Colorado, but you still should be able to win it. If you don't win it, uh, yeah, you definitely lost the election. You have royally fucked up. So now let's get on to the lean states. So we have, of course, Nebraska second. That's going to go lean dem. It definitely is winnable and a lot more winnable than, say, Virginia or Minnesota, but it's it's kind of too far to the left, and demographics there, they're not really working well for Republicans, and they got a lot of the more college-educated white voters that don't really vote Republican at all, so you might have a harder time winning that compared to something like Wisconsin or North Carolina, but... It definitely is in the realm of possibility. I definitely can imagine a scenario where Trump wins Nebraska's second by a very narrow margin. The representative race there, that's kind of different because it's probably going to be a lot more Republican. And the gerrymandering for the 2020 census, that might help out Republicans, but really it's kind of just too far gone for it to have an easy chance of flipping. So Nebraska's second, probably going to go blue. Same with New Hampshire. New Hampshire, definitely a lot more Republican than, like, Maine or Virginia. It definitely has a shot, and definitely the most likely Democrat blue wall state to flip in this election, but it, it's just still so Democrat that you can't really flip it all that often. And really, the last time I voted Republican was 2000 with George Bush, and a lot of time has changed since then and a lot of things have changed i mean colorado went red in that election new mexico that almost went red so really a lot of things have changed new hampshire really hasn't it's still definitely winnable for republicans and they won the governor race so that could help them but really it's not it it's probably going to go blue and it's going to go blue by around two to three percent maybe four percent if joe biden's lucky so that's for the lean states, for the Dems. So let's go on to the Republicans, which uh, North Carolina, that's pretty much the only one. You could make an argument for Wisconsin, but is it really in North Carolina territory? It might be. It's kind of on a whim if it's in that North Carolina territory. It's definitely more Republican than all the rest of the swing states, but really, North Carolina is most likely to go red out of all these kind of swing states where it's kind of a swing state but kind of not like joe biden can definitely win it but it's a lot harder to win than something like michigan georgia arizona nevada pennsylvania a lot of these states are decided on very 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 narrow margins because you know polarization and a lot of people aren't willing to switch votes and Biden isn't exactly that popular, and he's not exactly pulling out a large chunk of people who didn't vote for him originally. So, yeah, Joe Biden's probably not going to win North Carolina. He could, but it's pretty much if he wins something like, I don't know, Texas or Florida. It's not really that likely, but it kind of it kind of could be in a fictional scenario, but. Joe Biden, he's not in the position to win any of these states that are likely or leans. So, now that we got out of the way, here are the real swing states, and we're going to go through them one by one, starting with Wisconsin. Wisconsin, yeah, it's probably going to go Republican. It's definitely more favorable in demographics compared to something like Michigan or Arizona or Georgia, and it has a large base of white working class voters who... Traditionally, they didn't really vote for Republicans, but Trump, they will definitely vote for him. And they are kind of a new addition to the Republican base where it, a, lot, a lot of people have shifted towards Republicans because they are the white working class voters. And because you have that big demographic in Wisconsin compared to a place like 
again, Georgia and Arizona, you should have an easier chance at winning that state than something like Michigan, which definitely will be a lot harder to win and definitely the most likely state that Joe Biden can win out of all the swing states. And it's reaching the point where it probably won't be a swing state anymore. Michigan is just going too far to the left. And honestly, I don't really expect Trump to win it. It's going to be a pretty close margin. But again, I the Michigan Republican Party is just so incompetent that it's pretty evident that they're going to drop the ball in some way. And can Trump win it? Yeah, he definitely can. But is he going to win it? If I were to bet on it, no, he's not going to win it. And he's not going to win it by an uh, insane margin. Joe Biden isn't winning this by like five points or even three. He's probably winning it by less than 1%. And it's going to be close, but Trump needs to beg for a miracle to even win Michigan. But Biden, he definitely isn't having a great time in all these other states. And speaking of which, you got Pennsylvania. Now, Pennsylvania has been moving to the right by quite a bit compared to all these other states, and especially because they're doing automatic voter registration, which has backfired for them by quite a bit. It really isn't helping them at all, and you have a ton of people abandoning the Democrats to either vote independent or Republican in the state, and you got the automatic voter registration, which a lot of people are just voting Republican and identifying as Republican in the state now. So you have a lot more Republicans who are registered as Republican in this state where basically you now got a bigger base and especially in a very, very close state in elections like Pennsylvania, you definitely don't want a ton of people voting Republican and registering as Republicans in the state when you pass the automatic registration. So Pennsylvania, is it going to go red? It's kind of a coin toss. It's definitely more of a coin toss than Wisconsin, but yeah, you got a pretty decent chance there. And you definitely got a bigger chance of it going red than Michigan. So Pennsylvania, probably going to go red. Georgia, same thing. It's not really that likely because of the demographics there, but Joe Biden kind of shot himself in the foot by not really putting resources there. That was a really dumb decision that they did. But Georgia, it's kind of going to cost Democrats because they're not putting resources there. And it's still a very Republican state considering its demographics. But I mean, you're, if you don't put any resources there, how do you expect to win it? And if you don't put any resources there, I mean, you're kind of just costing yourself a state, which Georgia is a very important state to win because if you want any chance of winning the Electoral College, which nets you the presidency, you kind of need to get Georgia. And if Trump wins Georgia and Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, well, he's already got his 270 and he's got even beyond that. So, I mean, you lost Georgia, you lost Wisconsin. If he flips Pennsylvania, he wins. And it doesn't even matter if he doesn't win Michigan because he doesn't need it. And now we got Arizona. Arizona, definitely a lot less friendly de demographics, kind of like Georgia. It's definitely gotten a lot more to the left in recent years. It's gone from a likely slash safe Republican state to a toss up, which definitely doesn't help Republicans there. And of course, you got the Hispanic trends there, which, I mean, that was kind of an issue for Republicans and say, 2016 and 2020, but given the fact that Trump has way better numbers with Hispanics and the Hispanic trends haven't been as favorable to Dems in a place like Texas and a lot of these other states where, I mean, they're still pretty favorable to Democrats, but they definitely are shifting a little bit. And that shift, while it may be small, it definitely helps in winning a lot of these states. So. Arizona, given the fact that there are still the Republican voters there who, again, you got a lot of Republicans who want to vote for him, and then you got the third parties who, they're kind of McCain-style Republicans where normally they would vote for Joe Biden, but since you got the third parties, which is really going to bite Joe Biden in the ass, 
you have them not voting for Biden like they usually would, and instead they're going to be voting for someone like RFK or the Libertarians. So you have those people screwing him over, and then you got the people who are going to vote for Trump, and then you have Democrats who would vote for Biden, but they're not really into the whole Joe Biden president thing. So they're either voting third party or they're staying home, which definitely will cost him the state. And it's going to be decided by a very narrow margin, but really those third parties and the apathy for Joe Biden is kind of going to cost him the state. And then you have the final state here, Nevada. You got a nice white working class base. You have demographic trends in there where it's definitely moving farther to the right. And then you got the political trends where it's, again, moving farther to the light. They flipped the governor's race, which that was a big win for them, and they came very close to winning the Senate race against a pretty popular Democrat. So Nevada definitely shifting further to the right, and will this be the election that Nevada votes red? I kind of think it is, and we're going to be putting Nevada in the Republican column. And there you go, final total, 297 to 241. Final total, and... Biden, he loses the election by not necessarily a bad margin, but considering how polarized the nation is, it's not necessarily a good margin because he's only winning Michigan as a swing state, which, I mean, it's the most likely state that he's going to win, and he doesn't even win it by that big of a margin. So if did you think I got something wrong? I probably did, and you can leave your comments down below talking about your predictions and yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Out.